If it wasn't for Robert Blacklight Revelations, I would not have known this story, especially since this story happened in a state that's about two and a half hours away from me, and that would be West Virginia. So in this picture, you see a man by the name of Gavin Smith. He's now 18 years of age, but I don't think he was 18 when he committed the crime of which he did. And that was unaliving his entire family, which I believe was his mother, father and siblings. He's the only one left. And of course, he got sentenced to life with the possibility of parole. I don't know how he got that. And guess how long he only has to stay in jail for before he gets the eligibility to be eligible, eligible for parole. 15 years. Now you do the math. This man is 18 right now. All he has to do is 15 and he can be out. That's it. And all it took was for him deleting his entire family. Y'all can't tell me that this is not a operation protect the white boy. I would say halfway mark and i say halfway because he did get sentenced it's not like he's completely walking but the fact that he's getting a 15 year eligibility on parole thing it for taking out his entire family he still falls into that category a west virginia teen received the maximum sentence for fatally shooting four family members gavin smith now 18 was ordered to spend life behind bars for the shooting death of his mother stepfather and two young brothers all of whom he fatally shot on december 13th 2020 at their elkview west virginia home just northeast of charleston i do regret this and if i could i would take it back because it is one of the deepest regrets smith said it at the sentencing i don't i can't Take that. I don't, you can only take that with a grain of salt. Anybody who takes out their entire family like that and gives a statement like this to follow behind it, I don't take them seriously. Because if you really didn't want to, if you really wanted to do something about it, you would not have said, I don't know, done it. He made the conscious decision to do it. And the charges that he got will show exactly that. It said he was found guilty of first degree murder. In December, for killing his mother, Risa May Saunders Long, age 39, stepfather Daniel Day Long, age 37, and his youngest brother Jameson Long, age 3, for which he was handed three life sentences. The judge also sentenced him to 40 years in prison after being convicted of a second degree murder of the, for the death of his brother Gage Ripley, age 12, plus another 10 years for the use of presentment, use or presentment of a firearm during the commission of a felony. However, because Smith committed the murders while 16 years of age, the life sentences were handed with mercy. Now, here's where the bullshit comes in, meaning the defendant can apply for a pardon after he becomes eligible for parole after serving 15 years of his sentence, according to West Virginia state law. The mandate can be applied retroactively to fit the defendant's age when the crimes occurred, despite him now being over 18 and being tried as an adult. Judge Kenneth Ballard said he only granted mercy because it was mandated by law, according to NBC Huntington, West Virginia affiliate. I'm going to echo something Rob said in his video. The judge should have been able to find a way to override that. He should not be eligible for any type of parole. This man slaughtered his entire family in one fell swoop and didn't care. Now he has regrets because he sees what his life is about to be like for at least the next 15 years. In December, a Kanawha County jury agreed with prosecutors that Smith murdered his parents because they allegedly forbade Smith from seeing his girlfriend, Rebecca Walker, then 17. Like I said, any day that ends in Y, because that's no reason to take out your family. During the trial, evidence shows Smith and Walker were on a video chat before during and after the murders that right there just shows you that he didn't care they said before during and after i'm trying to figure out how was he able to hold up a conversation with his girlfriend during a massacre of his family and then do and get right back on there after he did it that doesn't sound like someone who has regret that sounds like someone who knew exactly what they were doing and didn't care but that's just me because I wasn't the deciding factor of his fate. Walker claimed she didn't personally witness the murders because the screen went to black. Smith killed his parents and a 12 year old brother before returning to the, to the video call. After hearing the youngest child crying in the background, Smith returned and killed the youngest victim.
Relatives found the bodies four days after the murders. Walker was accused of letting Smith hide at her grandmother's home and later pleaded guilty to four counts of being an accessory after the fact to first degree murder for which he is currently serving a 10 year sentence. Well, look at that. These two jailbirds. Well, I'm glad they didn't let her off the hook either. Rebecca, I'm sorry, Judge Ballard called the murders an act of pure evil. This was a heinous crime. You murdered your entire family in cold blood. You devised this plan to kill your family days and weeks in advance for the selfish reason of spending time with your girlfriend. You executed your mother and stepfather by shooting them in the head while they were asleep. Then you executed your two brothers by shooting them in the head, the youngest of which was hiding under his crib. Ballard said the defendant showed zero or more citing probation officers who reported Smith allegedly felt justified with his actions. Smith's attorney had challenged the prosecution request to send Smith to the max, arguing that he had been in jail since his arrest. They previously argued that Smith's home was basically a pressure cooker. Oh, my God. Here they go. So now they, you know, they always like to say, don't victim blame, don't victim blame. What did they just do right here? They tried to blame it on the victims. I don't know how in the world you not being allowed to see your girlfriend turned into this. And based on her actions, when he was on the video call with her, you know, before, during and after the murders. And the fact she has now a 10 year sentence because she was a, an accessory to, to the crime by letting him hide out at her grandmother's house. lets me know all the more reason why his parents probably did not want him speaking or talking to her. It sounds to me like she was a bad influence. Ballard said the defendant showed zero or more citing probation officers who reported. I already read that part. Smith's attorneys had challenged the prosecution request to sentence him to the max. Read that part too. Excuse me. He was basically trapped in a household from a combination of his family rules and wooed shutting down the schools. Join the club for those who fall into the same category. He made it seem like he was the only person that was in a lockdown during the woo woo during the pandemic. Excuse me, but the whole world was. But we made the best of it. Did y'all hear that? They tried to use that as an excuse. He said Gavin wasn't allowed to leave the house. We were in the middle of a pandemic. Where were you going to go? You cannot make this up, y'all. The victim's loved ones, including Daniel Long's adoptive parents, pushed for the harshest sentence. Doug Long gave an emotional statement at the sentencing regarding his dead son and grandchildren. I never expected my life to be in such turmoil at this stage of my life, said Mr. Long. No one knows what life brings and the situation surrounding this horrific murder was unimaginable. Nothing could prepare me for the sorrow and hurt inflicted on me and my family by this incident. Doug Long's wife, Susan, also spoke of the sentence and claiming she wished the sentences hadn't come with mercy. You and me both. I believe it is the best interest of our world to have someone who has murdered four individuals, including a defenseless baby, not to be considered for parole, said Mrs. Long. Just because he was 16 at the time doesn't make a difference. He still took lives. Now, y'all listen to how this man's father, who was the stepfather to him and his wife spoke with not saying, you know, I forgive him. Black people take notes. Well, for those who want to be on that, I forgive tip. Records show Smith is housed at the South Central Regional Jail and Correction Facility in Charleston before his expected transfer to state prison. Oh, they're going to have fun with him in there. He's going to have a whole new girlfriend. Hopefully it's what he deserves. Walker is eligible for parole in June with a projected release date listed as December 15th, 2025. Now listen to that. They said eligible for parole in 15 years. I don't know. Math wasn't my best subject, but I do know how to, you know, do the basics of add, subtract, multiply and divide. But if they said he was supposed to get 15 years before being eligible for parole, how in the world did it go from 15 years down to what it is projected on here? Because December 15, 2025, from the time he's been locked up, is not 15 years. It's not even close. So where is this 2025 coming from? Let me read it again. Walker is eligible for parole in June. 
with a projected release date listed as December 15th, 2025. And when they say June, are they talking about June of this year? I had to read that again because I wanted to make sure that my eyes were not deceiving me. I just had to be sure. And I'm sure the rest of you listening right now are hearing the same thing I'm hearing. Because one when it says 15 years, now this one says this, this says June and December 2025. It's it's a lot of it's a mixed bag going on here. But again, Operation Protect the White Boy in full effect. And this is definitely PC on PC crime. You know, they love to say that, you know, talk about black on black crime, but they ain't going to talk about this. But before I end this video, I wanted to bring up the definition of mercy law because I didn't know what the definition of that was. Maybe some of you did, though. Now, this is on the definitions.uslegal.com website or uslegal.com. Mercy law and legal definition. Mercy means a compassionate treatment or behavior toward criminal offenders or as of those in distress, especially an imprisonment. For example, in criminal cases, a plea of the defendant tactically admits his guilty by guilt by throwing himself on the mercy of the court. It is also called clemency or leniency. In short, mercy is a term that's used to describe compassion shown by one person to another or a request from one person to another to be shown such leniency or unwarranted compassion for a crime or wrongdoing. But based on the article that I read, especially towards the end of it, he didn't show any kind of compassion for what he did. The guy literally got back on a video chat, which could have very well been FaceTime with his girlfriend while before he committed the murder while he was committing the murder and then after there should be no mercy granted he should be in jail for the rest of his life but you know this is like one of those stories that's here today gone tomorrow more like gone for good because it didn't get reported like it should have and he going to go on, he going to do his little bit of time and he going to get out and he going to carry on with life like nothing happened. Like you did not just murder your entire family. But again, this is the establishment we live in now. See, this is what we were taught. Well, Rob was talking about in his video about how, you know, I'm not even going to say the person's name in here because they already trolled the hell out of the video anyway. But if y'all know, you know, MD we will just use their initials put out a video talking about there's a war on PC people. Oh, there's a war on right. And this Gavin Smith doing stuff like he did is helping to lead that charge on that so-called war. You better check the people in your ranks before trying to throw shots at other people who have nothing to do with you, nor could give a damn about what it is that you're doing.